With your help, we can continue to fight for freedom. This is not possible without your generosity. Join our quest for the truth and our freedom. Simply visit www.realitycheck.radio forward slash donate to make a difference today. Now it's time for Cam's Buddies. This week, we'll find out what they think about Grant Robertson bailing out from Parliament, and it seems he's found another trough to snuffle at. Vice-Chancellor at the University of Otago. Like Jacinda Ardern, he's bailed out after wrecking the joint. My producer has them all lined up and ready to go. Let's see what Cam's buddies think about Grant Robertson. Welcome to Cam's buddies, Lindley. Good to have you back. Hi, Cam. Are you well? Oh, yes. Box of birds. I've just finished an interview with Gary Moller talking about my health. So, um, you know. Um, oh, well, you'll be right. That's right. Gary. Gary's looking after that very well. And, um, you know, we had a good old chat. Everybody's going to enjoy listening to that. Mm, well, are you getting all your minerals tested? Yes, yes, I've done a test, and that's what we discussed. We had uh, we had uh, all the results of that, and there's there's some let's say deficiencies in, uh, in. But Gary's on top of that, and we're working on supplements and um, proteins and all sorts of things. But anyway, we're we're here to talk about Grant Robertson tonight and how he's gone from one. Mm. Uh, amply provided trough that has seen him expand himself uh, quite substantially and cruised off into another trough at uh, the University of Otago. What do you think about that? Well, I think it's funny you have said that because, well, first and foremost, he could not be my worst subject um, and all will be revealed shortly. But my friend, the first thing she said was he's just exchanging one trough for another. Dead right, snuffling so at are. the trough, like a little grunter pig. Snuffling, yes. And um, as you know, I've said to you before that I have done caricatures in the past. Well, the sight of him, you know, it's almost irresistible for the pencil, isn't it? Well, I think you'd better send one to me, Lindley. I, 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 we'll, we'll, publi- <laughs> we'll publish it on on, uh, on the RCR website and uh, and get people to see that uh, caricature. I'm sure. I'm sure Marie Busky would wouldn't mind to see a caricature of uh, of Grant Robertson. But you know, what is it with these oh, politicians? Right. What is it with politicians? They never, you know, like our Dern, right? They caused untold misery, harmed the economy, destroyed New Zealand society, and then they swan off to multi million dollar or at least hundreds of thousands of dollars um, salaried jobs that have been arranged for them. They never get to suffer any consequences. And we've got Grant Robertson no, doing the same. It, I know. And uh, my word for that is. The untouchables, they're absolutely untouchable. They can wreak havoc on everything and anything, trample all over the people with no remorse whatsoever, and they just go on to greater things. Uh, it's it's incredible, isn't it? I mean, you know, Trevor Mallard ended up as an ambassador to Ireland. Now we've got um, or Jacinda Ardern, who's got this, you know, f- swanky jobs, uh, you know, and a, and a big knighthood. Um, now we've got Grant Robertson um, doing this job, and it, it's amazing. I mean, he, he would have to be the worst finance minister in living <laughs> history, and he's going to be in charge <laughs> of, of a university that is already uh, substantially in debt. Uh, it's incredible, really. Well, it's the bull, bull in the china shop. And, uh, of course, that's my question, you know. So is he the right person for the job, we have to ask, don't we? And the Vice-Chancellor, Professor Helen Nicholson, in outlining the perilous financial state of the university last May, she said, quote, It's panic stations. I forecast that hundreds of staff will be leaving in the next 18 months. Yeah, well, that's and the thing, I'm isn't absolutely- it? I mean, Otago University is $203 million in debt, and now they think the guy who took government debt from $5 billion to $93 billion with nothing to show for it's their man. It's, it's incredible. Yes, it is incredible. Um, but he's really proud of, uh, proud of what he's done, and he's really proud of one achievement, 
which absolutely fascinates me. He's really proud that he is the first, now what is it, the first open gay deputy prime minister. whoop de doo well, I couldn't give two hoots about his sexual orientation or, or whatever he gets up to behind closed doors. I want to know if a person's got the merit for the job. Well, he doesn't, clearly. <laughs> you know? I mean, he's now got you know? a job. He's now got a job where he'll be earning more than the Prime Minister, right? He's reached the pinnacle yes, um, in his career, and so therefore he can only go downhill after he wrecks another institution. Yes, uh, but I suppose it's a good thing because he might um, wreck it fairly fast. It does look like it's dying a, you know, a long death, doesn't it? He, he might wreck it really fast. It'll be like um, humane euthanasia for pets, you know? Mm. I mean, the thing is, is, is he's likely to make them even more woke than they are, and we all know what happens when you go woke, you get broke. <laughs> go woke, go broke. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I just think it's absolutely, it's beyond belief. Yeah, I and, suppose uh, they've got one part yeah. right, though, in, in the, his job title. It's the vice part, isn't it? Oh, well, that's true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's true. Because, look, he's got no remorse. He's got no remorse for inflation being at a 32-year high when he left. He's got no remorse for a soaring cost of living crisis. And um, there were, at times, up to 600,000 people a month who relied on food charity. He's got no remorse for that. And he doesn't look like he's Mr. Meal. No. Does he? he? He's a salad dodger. <laughs> He certainly is. Yeah, I mean, um, I, you know, the Chris, other thing... Hip, Chris Hipkins is very skinny, and he's very skinny because Grant Robertson got all the sausage rolls. Oh, is that what happened? <laughs> well, well you'd, have to, terrible, you'd, have to, you'd have to say that was the case, wouldn't you, <laughs> given the state of Grant Robertson? I mean, we, we, we're we not allowed to talk about fat ladies, right? But um, we can talk about well, fat I men. Do. My I mother talk about always fat, used to. Fat ladies. My mother always used to tell me off when I wrote something about it. It's not over till the fat lady sings, and she'd say, "But you know, that's sexist." So um, I used to change <laughs> it and say, "Say it's all, it's all not all over until the fat man sings." No, well, you see, I'm the opposite of that scale. Um, I'm tall and lean, and um, all my life, um, even now, when people should know better, I get skinny shamed. Oh, do you? And um, I've been, yes, I've been called all sorts of things because they think they've got free license to do it. They think it's all right to tell people how skinny they are. I've been uh, told, you know, if I stood sideways on, I wouldn't cast a shadow, and and I'd make a good pull through for a gun. And um, <laughs> do I eat anything? And at least you know what a pull through is, though. At least you know what a pull through well, is. Well, that's true. Yeah, that's well, a bonus. Well, I thought it was Daniel Boone's. Hello? Yeah, no, I think I think that's right. I mean, you know what a pull through is, so that's good. Yeah, well, you know, I read Daniel Boone books, you know. Oh, I, I know about those guns. <laughs> you sound like a stand-up lady, Lindley. You really are. Uh, <laughs> well, a, a all woman it did was make, make me stronger. <laughs> oh, anyway, um, while I was waiting for you to come on the call, I've just written a very short little letter to Grant Robinson. Oh, good. Are you going to read it out? What, could I read that out? Absolutely, go um, for it. it. It's a little bit shocking, so brace yourself. So I've said here, um, he said, the quote, I don't regret saving lives and livelihoods during COVID, and I'm most proud of that. And I'm saying, well, Grant, if you're listening, you might like to know that due to your mob's policy of postponing surgery to support empty beds in hospitals, my spouse is now lying in the Belkin Cemetery. Mm. That's his current address. A simple gallbladder operation left months too late and he died in hospital six days afterwards. Like you, Grant, he gave everything he had, but there was no way back for him, unlike you, <clears throat> and no, he never got a cent from you for it, but you remain proud. Mm. And I think that sums, I think that sums them up. 
That's very they brave. Are it's very so, brave. They're so distanced from reality. And, you know, and, that he could stand up there and say he saved lives and he's proud of it. I know. It's I a, know. It's appalling and it's very brave of you to read that out, Lindley. And, uh, you know, I, I feel your pain. Well, you know, it just has to be addressed because there are thousands of people the same. There are people who missed cancer treatments, who couldn't get scans and all sorts of things, and they're not here now either. No, it's you awful. Know? And there's there's people now that are suffering the consequences of their awful mandates as well, and nobody's prepared to address it, you know. And we all know people like your husband or friends or family that have have got appalling health outcomes, including death, and these politicians yes. sit there and say how proud they are. You know, it, they're, exactly, they're actually criminals. I, you know, I've, I've read um, Jacinda Ardern's um, <clears throat> talk about Grant Robinson that she's put on, I think it's on Facebook or something, one of those things, but she's, you know, so sickly going on about health marvellous they all are and everything. I mean, they are totally removed from reality. And he says that his his toughest time was during the um, protest. Well, it wasn't tough for him. You know, he, he had all the comfort of um, either home or, or parliament buildings and he could sit up there and look down on those people. That wasn't yeah. tough. He had all those strapping policemen in, in their in their uniforms that he could watch all day long. Mm. He would have and, enjoyed um, that. You know, I, I just find them, I don't know what the other buddies will think, but I just find this absolutely beyond belief. Um, well, I mean, but, your, your views were rather personal and very strong and... You know, the listeners out there could hear that emotion. They could hear the emotion in my voice. Um, you know, I'm touched that you read that out. Well, I think it has to be said. I've been waiting for a long time to be able to say that. Well, I'm very happy to have given you that opportunity, Lindley. Good. All right. I better let you go so you can... Um, gather yourself together and I need to do the same before the next uh, call. That was very emotional. <laughs> but, oh, well, uh, it's real. It's reality. It's reality. We're on Reality Check Radio. This is something that's real. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Mm. And and that's what we're here for. Mm. And, and it's important that these politicians know this. And I'm going to get the producer to um, trim out your little letter and um, I'm going to get it sent to Grant Robertson. And uh, we'll see. Oh, thank you so and, much. Yeah, we'll make sure he can hear it. Um, he needs to hear it. And um, I'll even try thank and you. get a little shareable of that um, so we can put that on Facebook and Twitter and things like that because I think these politicians need to know what, what the effects of their decisions were and the very personal harms that were caused by their actions. They do. And thank, thank you for that. You're most welcome, Lindley. And uh, we'll talk again cool. next week. Okay, thanks, Cam. Thanks. See bye. you later. Bye bye. Good afternoon, Paul. Welcome to Cam's Buddies. Good afternoon, Cam. How are you? Fantastic. So, how about that, Grant Robertson? Eh, he's uh, quit Parliament and uh, decided to go and get a job where he's paid more than the Prime Minister to run a university that is two hundred and three million dollars in debt. Well, he knows a little bit about debt, so maybe that's um, one of his. Um characteristics that they were the characteristics that they were looking for. But what I think is interesting is wasn't that one of the jobs that Chris Hipkins was saying um, a bit earlier was they were watching it because the pay was too high and it was way outside the scale. And I think if I remember rightly, they were over half a million dollars wages for such a position back in 2017. Yeah, it's $600,000. It's more than the Prime Minister. Yes, I mean, I mean, those jobs, if you can get them, are pretty good. And um, I know that those universities seem pretty woke, so that they um, they would like someone like the um, finance minister of Labour or the you know the finance um, spokesman for Labour, because 
Labor kind of leans down those ways, but um, it doesn't sound at all like jobs for the boys, so that's good. He's um, he's got some skills, as you say, on, on debt. Now, Otago University is kind of small beer for him, $203 million in debt. Um, Grant Robertson took government debt from $5 billion to $93 billion with nothing to show for it, and they've decided he's their man. So I guess we're going to see, um, you know, uh, I'll, I'll, Otago University's debt uh, try and get at least close to a billion dollars in short order. Well, I'm looking. I'm thinking how many how many students? I think they um they have something like um two, twenty thousand students and over four hundred staff. Is it four thousand staff? I've got huge amounts of staff there, so um, I'm not at all surprised that they've got that sort of debt. Um, uh, the, these sort of things, I, I just look and uh, I shake my head really. And um, is that an appointment that was happening prior to the new government, or did the new government sanction this? Well, uh, the university is responsible for their own hiring, but um, it's interesting you raise those numbers. I've just had a quick look of that. Uh, you'll you'll find these uh, mildly amusing. Uh, academic staff at University of Otago, one thousand seven hundred and forty-four. And uh, there's 2,246 of them uh, as administrative staff. Uh, so they've got, you know, more administrative staff than they have academic staff. But you're right, it's about 4,000 staff and about 21,000 students. Yeah. Because um, I remember thinking those numbers way back were, were just at odds with things, you know. And um, I was thinking it was 4,000, but if I was saying it, I was thinking that's just ridiculous. It's one in five. So there's 35 students you've got a staff member. I'm thinking, no, it won't be that. I must have made a mistake by 10, so that's why I was thinking 400. But the yeah, 4,000 staff, I mean, it, it, there must be something there that you could cull to try and um, save a dollar if you're of a mind to. Um, but you could probably employ more staff as well if you wanted to see how much you can blow the debt out by. Well, I mean, that's ridiculous. You know, there, there will be um, courses at Otago University that are of no use to man or beast. And uh, they could probably save a lot of money by culling those. But, you know, I think this looks like a University of Otago is a make-work scheme for failed people in any other job, and they end up being teachers or supporting the teachers. Exactly. And um, I think, it was was Otago's specialty, was it the dentistry there? Was it um, medical people there? I think it might have been medical people that I think um, it's, I think it's out both. of Otago I think it's both. Yeah, I think it's both dentists and, uh, and medical school. Yeah, well, I'm not sure that they um, they get many graduates through because if you try and get a uh, appointment at the doctor these days, you, you can't get in in the next day or two. It's in the next week or two or three, and so that then um, whatever ailment you have has either healed itself or it's killing you. So um, I look and I think there's something amiss if um, if there's one in four, so one admin for every four or five students. And then when we're at the end of it, there's, there's no doctors that are around to help the general public anyway. It seems ludicrous. It seems a ludicrous amount of money. I'm just looking up the stats. Their budget uh, is seven hundred and fifty-six million dollars per annum. Seven hundred and fifty-six million. Right. It seems a lot of. That's well, you a didn't lot have of, to save much to actually um, get get the thing back in the in the right colour of the ledger, but. Um, it depends on whether they've got a um, a policy to to try and see how much they can spend and blow the budget out by, or have or have a deficit by, and um, does that money take into account the um, return on investment of an asset? In other words, the price of the land and buildings they've got there, someone has ownership of that, and that's worth a lot of money as well. Because I look at many of these places, and, and I think they they don't live in the land of reality financially. Even in their financials, because they um, they've got a whole lot of free stuff like the land, the buildings, whatever, and then they put a number in for them and put it in on one hand and take it out on the other. So it's really not the number. So often these things, when I look at the finances of any of the educational facilities that I've looked at in the past, it's quite hard to read the numbers because they um, well they don't make they don't make they sense don't, from a business perspective, do they at all? No, no, not at all. And also, one of the things that um, any um, government funding like 
that would be likely to be in the university, and I'm not just talking about the extra students fees, but if the government is funding any of this, they want the money to be spent on the students in the year that it was given. Yeah. So that they like to know that if they gave a million dollars, that a million dollars was spent on the those students that it was lined up for. So you can't make a profit. But a two hundred million deficit, not too many of us want those in our business. Having said that, um, with a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar income, that's not inconsequential either. And. No. Um, who knows? I, I wouldn't have thought Grant's the man for the job, to be fair. I think you could find better people out of PwC or any of these other um, reasonably sized accounting firms that would bite your arm off to get a position that pays in yeah. the order of north of half a million. Yeah, I, I, I think um, Grant will sit there and go, oh, $203 million debt. Nah, let me add it. We'll see how big that we can get that number. Hmm. All right, Paul. Okay, that's nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's nothing. I'll show you debt. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing, isn't oh, it? They, they never suffer any consequences. Anyway, Paul, I better go go to Jack. He's waiting on the line, so I will uh, say goodbye to you for next until next week, and uh, we'll speak again. Take care. Bye for now. Hello, Jack. Welcome to Cam's Buddies. Thank you, Cam. Hello. So, Grant Robertson, eh? I'm sorry He's about a, last week. This week yeah, I'll improve. That's all right. You're an elderly man. You've got to have your rest every now and then. Don't let it happen hey, again, enough though. Enough of the old. <laughs> <laughs> It'll never happen again. So uh, Grant Robertson, he's gone from one trough to the next. He's now scored himself a job that pays higher than the Prime Minister. And uh, he's gone to a university that's $203 million in debt, although he probably thinks that's chump change, really. And uh, Otago University thinks he's the man for the job. What do you think? I think he is the man for the job. I think he was the man for the job in the last Labour government. Unfortunately, he was surrounded by idiots. Um, just to name a few, Phil Twyford, Anaya Mahuta, Carmel Cipollone, Willie Jackson. Do I need to go on? Well, I reckon he was it... fantastic. He steered a great chip. And you know what was best about him? He was always positive. Unlike our current two, that are totally negative which is yeah. really, really getting the country down. The Prime oh, yeah. Minister, for example, has just come out with the most negative load of bull ever, and the whole country's going, oh, oh, we're doomed. Well, it's like that in New Zealand, of course. Yeah, the, the thing is with, um, with Grant Robertson is that he could act with glee when you're pushing the, um, the, the cash printers out the window and spraying vast swathes of cash into the economy causing massive inflation. Of course, you can be gleeful when you're doing that. Well, you may say that, but uh, he navigated us through a very tough time. And um, say what you like, the Otago University people are not stupid. I mean, I believe that he had to be a doctor to be in that position. He's not a doctor, but um, he met the requirements. They know that he's, he's a brilliant guy. Oh, well, we'll have to beg to differ on that, but I guess that's why we have Cam's Buddies, so people can ring in and um, say cockamamie things, and the listeners will then write in and say, what sort of drugs is Jack taking? But um, that's fine. That's lots all good. Yeah, lots of them. <laughs> you can cut me off now if you like. <laughs> <laughs> no, why, why would I do that? I enjoy talking to you, Jack. Um, yeah, no, I've yeah. got a lot of time for him. Well, Grant Robertson said that he's especially proud of the work that he did during COVID, and he found that the um, time of the protest at Wellington was his most challenging time. Now, you've sort of covered off his COVID work, but what about that comment about the Wellington protest? Well, forget all that. Imagine sort of being the Minister of Finance, um, surrounded by a bunch of idiots in your own party, and then the Greens, to top it off. I mean, to come through and try and appease everybody slightly and keep the the ship running steadily, that's no mean feat. I reckon he did a great job, personally. You, you may recall last year, you said, who would I have mm. in a forthcoming election or parliament? Yeah. And I think at that time, I said, well, 
look at Nicola Willis, what the hell does she know? And she's proven to be. Oh, I agree with you on that. Yeah, she knows nothing. Yeah, totally yeah. agree with you on that. But I, I would have thought Michael Cullen was a better finance minister than Grant Robertson all day long. Wait, and, well, oh, okay. Yeah, he was good too. Very good. But you see, I'm a Rob Muldoon fan. Yeah, that goes against the grain, doesn't it? And he oh. and Grant Robertson was compared with him today on the news. Well, the the thing with Rob Muldoon is he Muldoon actually did. built he actually built things that we're using today to you know the funny thing is is that the very people who opposed Rob Muldoon, you know the values type people, the greeny type people, the left wing, they opposed all of the things like um, Think Big, and it's all of those projects that are powering their um, smugmobiles, their little electric cars exactly. that they drive where around and are all funded by now? the power from those Think Big projects. As I said to you before, when I was an engineer on the Manapuri Power Project, that broke my heart when they didn't complete it. Yeah. Um, the biggest project of its type in the world, cut short by greenies voting against it at the last moment. Anyway, probably, that's probably, story. Some, probably some rare water snail that needed to be moved to a different lake. People that have been to Australia lots of times but have never once ever been to Manapuri. It's a beautiful place. <laughs> I spent a couple of years there. Oh, you know all about the mosquitoes then? Yeah, flies, yep. I, I grew to love them. That was the only way you could cope. Well, they're big enough to eat, aren't they? They're just like small chickens, really. <laughs> yeah, but there was one exposed part of your body. You were covered head to foot, you thought, and then there'd be this black fur sitting somewhere. You're like, oh, another unexposed part. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> all right, so you, you're a big fan of Grant Robertson. You think he deserves that job? Um that's that's yep. your opinion. And I, oh, do you think that the chancellors and others in Otago University are stupid? Yeah, I do actually. But then I, okay. I have a, I have an extreme disdain for for academics in general. Um, so you know, maybe it's pathological with me. I just don't like them, and anything they do, I don't like either. Yeah, well, I'm having said what I said, I'm uh, going to be a hypocrite and kind of agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jack, on that note, uh, we'll say goodbye for tonight and we'll talk again next week. Cheers. Thank you. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Jimmy. Good to have you back on the show. G'day, Cam. How are you this week? Perfect. We're good? Yeah, always good. Good. So how about Robbo, eh? And what Aunt top- Robertson's got himself a cushy new job. What do you think about that? I think it's a trougher going from one big trough to another big trough, mate. It's like and pigs squealing in delight. Cargo- you can imagine it, can't you? Squeal <laughs> like a little pig. He's, he's gone to a six, allegedly $630,000 salary. It's more than the Prime Minister. For someone, who's, there's someone, there's, for someone who's failed and been voted out to be awarded that job as a non-professor is just such a trough. It just looks like Ardern, isn't it? Bolting after wrecking the joint, going to a cushy number... Yeah. Uh, with no consequences yes. for your actions at, at all, not even a second of not earning any money. No, and they've both gone to woke universities. It's just terrible. What about they don't the, have any scruples, these people. Well, what about the, the, the situation of Otago University there? $203 million plus in debt, and uh, they've decided that the guy who increased our debt in New Zealand, from five billion to ninety-three billion, is the is the man for them? Well, that's what I was going to say. I think that that's going to be his undoing because he will have to make cuts there. You can't. The university isn't the New Zealand Treasury, and it doesn't have the funding and just can't borrow. You will have to make some cuts. There's no he, way doesn't have, he doesn't have the government printing presses anymore to um, vomit no. out vast swathes of cash. He doesn't have the taxpayers in New Zealand backing his big decisions, and so he will have to make cuts. They will have to chop. And how's he going to do that? He doesn't know how to do that. So two or three years, the uni will be going to the government for a bailout, you think? Well, I don't think it'll take that long. (laughs) Well, yeah, it's just... And also, he was given the job without being a professor. So, you know... It's astonishing, isn't it? They've shortcutted it for him. It has to you know? have been a, 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 a cushy shoulder tap deal, isn't it? You know, did, were they advertising? I mean, was he the best candidate? What, who were the other candidates? Why won't they tell us that? 
you know, if they said there was a field of 57 uh, eminently qualified people, but weren't, you know, we like Robbo, so we're choosing him. It, that's what it looks like to me. Well, that's what it is, isn't it? There's just no doubt about it. it like, I mean, it's just all too, you know, he, by not standing in a central Wellington seat, we knew he was going to chuck it in. He would have known about this and been waiting for a long time for this just to pop up. That's what these list troffers do, isn't it? Hey, it just proves that they're all troffers. They honestly are. Now, this week with Lux and cutting on uh, welfare has been good. Good to see the squealing out there. Oh, the lots, of squealing, lots of squealing. Um, you know, the news Speaking media will go and find money. some some little activists, people who will be a little bit sad that they might have to go and get a job. But how can they morally say that they should just be allowed to sit there and get paid by other taxpayers and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it? How do they explain that away, Cam? Um, it's called sanctimony. You know, I just, I've been seeing the outcries against Luxon and saying that he just doesn't know and disconnected from the reality, but it's like some people have been on the job seeker for 13 years. Well, they're and they're not able to work. And they just don't maybe, want to. maybe they think it's like hide and seek, and they're taking the hide part literally and not doing the seeking part. <laughs> oh, I don't know, but it's, it's thank, thank God the adults are back in charge. So yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's my thoughts on on um, old Grant, mate. Well, if, uh, if, if Hipkins goes, Labor's got no. Um, what experience have they got in there? Their their talent pool is as shallow as a birdbath in summer. I oh, know Willie Jackson would be the most experienced, just about, wouldn't he? Oh, oh. I hope he gets. Hip, what, hip, wouldn't that retired. be awesome if he was the leader? <laughs> hey, that would be amazing. Eh? That would be make my day. I would, it would make my day. He, he probably wouldn't like, like to. What, um, it, wouldn't like me to share my text messages with them. It might become embarrassing. <laughs> oh, well, he's got it. Like, I don't like his politics, but he's got a certain um, appeal to him. He's a bloody funny bugger, eh? I like when his. I like his radio. front. Yeah, I, I. You know, he's he's unashamed about what he's about, um, and I kind of like that. You know, in politicians, that they're comfortable in their own skin. He gives as good as he gets. He tends not to get too precious yeah, yeah. about things. And he gives people a fair go. He just, just he just wants his own trough. But when he had his radio show, and he used to appear on his radio show, remember? I did. He he was he was he, he was bloody funny. He'd give callers heaps of fun. Give them give them heaps of stuff. Hey? I always thought he did he a reasonable tough. job, and he always gave me a fair a fair suck of the save, so to speak. And um, I enjoyed yeah, going. Say, oh, Cam- Cameron's okay. He's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I like Willie. He gave me a go. I'm prepared to give him a go. Um, but you know, it's politics, so you got to take the rough with the tumble. And um, yeah, he's not too bad. Uh, I actually quite like Willie. Um, I think he's racist, but yeah. um, I'm entitled to say that. Um, you know. So uh, yeah, I hope he does um, step up. I mean, there's nobody else in Labor that's any good. I mean, they're all just a bunch of well, hopeless. They, what's your thoughts on McAnulty? I think he's dodgier than a two-bob watch. <laughs> he's a self-declared socialist. Yeah. But he's he'd be a Chardonnay socialist. Leader. What? He'd be a Chardonnay socialist for, for sure. But they all are. Yeah. The... Um, yeah, well, he's touted as the next leader. So uh, once Hipkin goes, which is, you know, potentially coming around, then yeah. how does Labor rebuild from this? You know, well, every political we, we need party has to do this. National had to go through it. You know, there'll, there'll be a few coups, there'll be a few spills, there'll be, you know, a few people who make stuff-ups. It's all entertaining and it just makes great radio for me. So, you know, I don't actually want them to get themselves <laughs> sorted out. I want to see carnage. And, uh, you know, I want to see – politics is a blood sport, and I want to see lots of blood. Yeah, well, you're, you're dead right, but I always believe that governments always need opposition and a yep. decent opposition. You know, yep. not, that's, that's the whole point of it. And Hopkins is useless at opposition. 
and you know we don't want Luxon getting too big. You know we want him to keep thinking hard about his decisions. Yeah. So, anyway, Grant's gone, mate. That's another win. It is. It win. is another one. It'll be fantastic that he's gone. Hopefully, he won't um, make any more pronouncements like Helen Clark does or Jacinda Ardern does. We, he just disappears. We never <laughs> hear from him again. And he just sits down Helen there and, and sits down there in Otago in Dunedin, um, in the depths of winter, uh, eating pies and sausage rolls. <laughs> okay, Cam. Thanks, mate. All right, mate, thanks for your call, and we'll talk next week. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Miles. Pleased to have you back on the show. Good afternoon, Cam. It's great to be back. How are we today? Yeah, good, mate. Good, mate. Everything's good. Every day above ground's a good day. Excellent. Excellent. So, Grant Robertson left, has quit Parliament, and he's got himself a job that pays more and the Prime Minister. What are your thoughts on that? Are we referring to Grant Robinson in the role of Vice-Chancellor at Otago University by chance? We are. That's the, the very one. And is this trough so deep and wide that you could lose um, half of the uh, poor people of South Auckland in it? Probably. It's not quite as deep and as wide as the trough he's been supping from. Uh, certainly doesn't have the ability to line up uh, cash printing machines outside windows and spray vast uh, quantities of New Zealand dollars into the economy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, well, I, I mean, I mean this, oh, this is what I can't work out, Miles, right? And, and I've put the same question to each of the buddies. I said, you know, um, Otago University is $203 million in debt. They have 4,000 staff for 21,000 students. And of those 4,000 staff, about a third of them are actually teaching and the rest are administration staff. And they have, a, they have an annual revenue of $750 million. So they've decided to pick the guy that took New Zealand's debt from $5 billion to $93 billion, and they're going to pay him more than the Prime Minister gets. Look, I think it's a fantastic idea. Look at it this way. The, the Vice-Chancellor, I, I have I have to um, be humble here, and I have submitted to the scourge of Google, and I have asked Google, what are the duties of a Vice-Chancellor? Mm. And it came up with leadership, management, and development of the university and realisation of its strategic plan. Now, I thought this was quite interesting, so I decided, what are the qualities of a good vice-chancellor? Because of the topic of conversation, I think all of us have strong opinions about uh, Grant Robertson, and I thought I would just tell you what Mr Google says. Well, apparently, the qualities of a good vice-chancellor are exceptional ability across a wide range of working situations, together with the requisite degree of authority, integrity, financial probity, commercial acumen, and intellect. And I thought, well, there's a big fat raspberry blowing there, isn't there? Sure is. He's got none of those skills at all. So I began to reflect on Otago University and its debt and its amount of staff, and I thought, maybe it's not a university. Maybe it's actually a Labour Party nursery. And maybe we are, through all our generous donations as taxpayers, are funding future Labour Party MPs and activists. And I thought to myself, hmm... Maybe that's why Grant Robertson has gone down to Otago University. Maybe recruitment of Labour um, members in Otago has fallen off significantly and he needs to correct that. Maybe it is. But I certainly can't see him... Well, I wish him all, his, all the best, but really? I mean, it's 
sounds to me like Otago University is in a precarious situation. And I'd just like to say the requisite degree of authority, integrity, financial probity and commercial acumen and intellect, well, I can tell you that if they're looking for that, I don't think that Grant Robinson would be the correct person for the job. Yeah, I mean, I Jack doesn't agree with you. He thinks he's wonderful, but, you know, it, um, Jack took the vaccine, so, you know, that well, kind of says everything. I'm, <laughs> but I'm sure I, he is wonderful, but I, at what? Tell yeah, me at what the, he's wonderful. That's the thing because, you know, uh, the way I'm looking at it from, I think he's the worst finance minister we've had in living memory, and that's taking that's really challenging uh, Sir Robert Muldoon for that title. Um, but I think Robertson easily beats him in that regard. One wonders about Otago University. One wonders whether it's a fixed-term contract with Robertson. I doubt it, but think of it this way. What sort of wreckage of Otago University as it is now, and uh, let's be honest, Otago University's financial status now is what I would describe as grim. I mean, it's hanging on by its teeth and we're seeing a whole lot of pro-vax nutters come out of um, Otago, not to mention the anti-smoking nutters that come out of Otago. All of these types of activism really... I mean, Otago University is staggering, I think, and um, people are asking the question, why should I go to Otago? And I don't think Grant Robertson will have the answer to that question. No, I don't think he will at all. I don't think he's got any answers for anything other than I'm sure we could increase our borrowings. Look, there's no doubt that Otago has been a a stellar institution in the past, but... um, Sadly, I I have to say that the respect I have for the university academic system these days is is beyond low. I'm very, very disappointed with what the universities are getting up to, and I'm beginning to think that they have lost the plot and have become um, left-wing propaganda organs. I think that happened quite some time ago, (laughs) Miles. Maybe you're right. I'm I, I'm not known for keeping tabs on universities, but you know, in my day, Otago University and um, going down to Otago was the making of many young people, and uh, certainly doctors from Otago University uh, were well respected and looked up to in any country in the world, and I could say that of a number of courses but I'm beginning to seriously wonder about Otago University these days. And seriously, Grant Robertson, I believe, will not inspire confidence in the largely conservative catchment that Otago University services. And I would tend to agree with you on that. And um, I, you know, I think he's not qualified in, in even the remotest sense uh, for the job, uh, it has to have been a jobs for the boys. Uh, and, uh, what it's who you know, not what you know. And um, but the, on the plus side, I guess we never have to see him bloviating in the parliament ever again. Thank goodness for that. Thank goodness for that. And on a on a personal note, uh, Dunedin is is quite a cold city in in the winter. And for me personally, I can't stand uh, 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 the winters in Dunedin. And um, I just wonder how long Grant Robertson will stand them. Or maybe he'll have um, six months off every year in, in, a, in a sunny climb. Well, I'm sure at six hundred and something, six hundred and thirty thousand dollars or whatever it is, he'll be spending a lot of time in uh, tropical. Good uh, lord! Climate. Did you just say six hundred and thirty thousand dollars? Yeah, he gets paid more than the prime minister. Six hundred and thirty. Yep. Good lord. I think I'm going to have to have a glass of wine and a sit down. I think you better. You may as well get get back into that now. 
I didn't realise it was so much. That's laughable. I'm sorry. That's laughable. Yep, $630,000. That's what the Vice Chancellor of Otago University, University, $203 million in debt, right? 4,000 staff for 21,000 students. That's what you get paid. The, the poor schmucks. That's all I can say. Totally. Anyway, Miles, it's an that's your thoughts on Grant Robertson, and uh, hopefully we'll have a more convivial uh, topic to talk about next week. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much, Cam, and we'll see you next week. Okay. Thanks, Miles. Wow. Wasn't Lindley's letter to Grant Robertson moving? It certainly cracked me, and I might have even had a little tear coming out of my eyes. They're leaking for sure. I'm so blessed to have such a great bunch of mates, and Lindley is the new buddy, and it's amazing the things she com comes up with. They're all so wise and speak common sense, except maybe Jack's been on the source. Not sure. I'll check. Tell us your thoughts on Cam's buddies by emailing inbox at realitycheck.radio or text to 2057. Thanks for tuning in to RCR, Reality Check Radio. Do you like what you're listening to or dislike what you're listening to? Either way, we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us now. You can text us with your message to 2057. That's 2057. Or email us at inbox at realitycheck.radio. We'd love to hear from you. So connect with us today.